track time of the day for the GT1 Sports Club. The uh, second time of the year that uh, the cars have joined around the Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe powered by AWS and the likes of Pagani, McLaren, Lamborghini and Porsche all represented out on track. And the first thing that strikes one about all of this is just the symphonic noise. Let's just uh, eavesdrop for a little while as you look at the Lamborghini SCV12 out on track. We also have the Pagani Huara. The car's capable of a top speed of something like 217 miles an hour, if you can find the right bit of straight. Uh, all of these cars used on the circuit rather than on the road. And the uh, GT1 Sports Club, administered by Curbstone, bringing the cars, you might say, to their natural environment, really, onto a racetrack. But the uh, Huara are car built in 2020 it weighs in at something like 1050 kilos 850 brake horsepower only 30 of them were produced but uh, the Pagani Huara another extraordinary bit of kit that uh, forms part of this supercar demonstration here at the circuit with the uh, twin turbo Mercedes AMG V12 engine in the base car uh, in the R it was the uh, HWA breathed upon V12 Mercedes-Benz engine. As you see, top speed of 217 uh, miles an hour, not kilometers, miles an hour, 850 horsepower. Only 30 of these produced, and the Pagani Huara R, another astonishing shape. A race car for the road, in a sense, but these advanced level of supercars uh, being given track time today and then a full track day tomorrow. Curbstone that looks after these uh, track days, offering the full service where there are, if you want them, timing transponders, uh, data loggers. Uh, you can have driver coaches as well to help you understand how to get the most out of a car like this. If you have a car like this, if you're lucky enough to own one, uh, then you ought to be able to get the most out of it, but not be afeard of it. So there is expert driver coaching. One of the uh, driver coaches Philippe Chatelet, we've seen already in the Super Trofeo race here. Another one, Frederic Verviche, we'll see out on track in the uh, Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe race later on in the day. We also have the McLaren Senna GTR, 210 miles an hour as a top speed, 825 horsepower, and slightly more mass produced, in as much as at least 75 of these cars were made. But again, it is a race car in all but not having a number on the side. And the McLaren, part of the current generation of, of GT cars and supercars that have been built uh, with uh, GT3, GT4 and these supercars all now forming part of McLaren's portfolio. But the Senna GTR that was a car fired up the hill at Goodwood a few years back when it was first launched is uh, another amazing bit of kit, bit of a twitch as the power comes back in out of turn 12, a part of the circuit where patience prevails, but then down the hill into the chicane and this circuit with lots of runoff with long straights uh, absolutely perfect for these cars lovely the lamborghini scv12s just through shot here comes the mclaren onto the pit straight and another glorious noise as it howls past the pits There, the Lamborghini SCV12. Another car that uh, has been seen and heard up the hill at Goodwood. Emmanuel really Pirro was a bit of a star in that at the Festival of Speed a couple of years ago. Another car with 210 miles an hour as its capability, 830 horsepower, 40 of these amazing pieces of kit produced. And this is a car that you can hear from miles away. It makes just the most amazing noise. Just follow it for a lap and wallow in the music, as it were, of the Lamborghini SCV12.
the SEV12, a track only uh, supercar made by Lamborghini under the Squadra Corsa racing division, launched in 2020. And the most powerful and the last purely naturally aspirated car built by the brand. Six and a half litre engine. Uh, but uh, the engine, even though it's the same one that's in the Aventador SVJ, it's turned through 180 degrees, so the gearbox can be mounted at the rear. Uh, engine, as we've been saying, around about 850 horsepower, it uh, belts out. Special exhaust tips to reduce back pressure. Six-speed, non-synchromesh sequential uh, unit for the gearbox. And that also serves as a stressed member of the chassis by supporting the rear pushrod suspension. Rear-wheel drive and weighs in about 300 pounds lighter than the Aventador SVJ. It's got a FIA-approved carbon composite crash structure, carbon fibre monocoque, uh, and uh, the... Uh, Lamborghini then has a power to weight ratio of 1.66 kilos per horsepower. Back to the Pagani for a moment. The uh, Huara and Zondas here. Part of the circuit, of course, in Barcelona allows the drivers to explore the handling of the cars, but other elements all about the horsepower, all about the speed, and all about the noise. And uh, coming out of the chicane, heading towards the timing line, this is where the speed starts to build. Lamborghini gets out of the way, and now, past the pits they come. Another part of the curbstone element to running these cars on their track days is that not only do you get driver coaching and, as I said earlier on, the timekeeping and the, the data service, there's also uh, a service point. So if your car's got a problem, uh, there will be mechanics on hand all day long to try and sort out the issue and uh, race simulators as well. So if you want to learn about the circuit before you go onto it in your car, then you can do. This, another great charismatic car, the Porsche 935, the second iteration, if you like, uh, a modern classic, this, because it takes the original shape, but this is a modern version of the 935. Uh, we saw, of course, racing at Spa back in 2019. 211 miles an hour, 700 horsepower. Now, 77 of these cars were produced. This one owned by Stefan Rattel, and it runs in the sort of pseudo uh, Interscope, Ted Field, Danny Ongais colour scheme, which was a, 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 an American IMSA uh, car of its day, but the modern version of the 935 again it is so Porsche you can tell that it's a modern car but you can tell that it's the 935 shape and uh, of course the original 935s only ever races but uh, this car could just about get away with on the road I guess and uh, it's a car that when it was launched was a real head turner because it came uh, as another element of Porsche acknowledging its heritage. A lot of brands only able to look forward, but Porsche has always looked after its past, looked after the heritage. And uh, having run cars at Le Mans in retro colour schemes, then to have a completely retro car in a way, uh, took many people by surprise. And it really is another fantastic piece of machinery. So the 935 comes up through turn 16. As I say, they've had that uh, race for the cars, but uh, the grid bolstered by a few 911s rather than the pure modern-day 935. Down towards turn one, it now goes. Another of the Lamborghini SEV12s there. Production of the Essenza SCB12 limited to just 40 units. Uh, there is talk of a, a one-mate race series for those cars, but I'm not convinced that is necessarily going to be the the answer because there are so many of the Huracans around. Uh, all of the cars having been stored at uh, near the Lamborghini factory in Santa Agata, with the uh, cars based in a special hangar, owners able to have a look at them via an app linked to security cameras if they wished. 
and delivery of those cars began back in December 2020. So the Porsche continues to circulate. As we say, this car from 2019, that's when the uh, production and customer deliveries began, 77 of them built. The McLaren Senna is the next car to come over the timing line. Another track only car. We tend to talk about supercars. In fairness, they're really hypercars, these. And the McLaren Senna. If you have a close look through the side of the door, you can actually see the driver at work and his legs working because the way that the bodywork is designed. Although it's a closed car uh, and closed sides, of course, you can just about see in. So, peer in. And the legs you can see of the driver. In terms of power to weight, 694 PS per tonne. That's the highest of any track designed McLaren. And it's got up to 1,000 kilos of downforce this car can generate. You can see the aerodynamic aids, not just that enormous rear wing, but the diffuser, the aero flicks on the side of the car as well. So uh, the fastest McLaren outside of Formula One McLaren, this. Seldom have there been as many Paganis in one place, I would have thought, other than the factory. Uh, but they are here in good numbers, both the Huara and the Zonda R. The uh, Zonda's being a bit more modest in this track period, uh, but uh, not venturing out. The Huara's have been, as you've been seeing, and another one here. So out of 30 that were produced, a fair number of them, a good proportion have made their way to Barcelona for today and for tomorrow, when many of them will stay on for their track day here, operated by Curbstone. Company created by Patrick de Glabacher, former uh, racer with SRO. And SROs, you will have gathered, big supporters of this initiative, because key to SRO's activities has always been dream cars, GT cars, supercars, and here they are, even if they're not Raceable. If there's not a championship for them, then this track time is uh, another golden opportunity. Right, let's go eavesdropping again. even with headphones on, makes no difference to the noise of that car because it's, all of them in fairness, uh, just reverberate around the circuit and however far away you are, you can still clearly hear them and met the many, many fans that are here have all stayed close to the circuit, all fascinated, what's making that noise? And the answer in this context is another of the Pagani Huara R's that comes into turn three. Now back on the power. Senna, for example, heading back to the paddock, where here at the circuit there is a, a dedicated area for people to go and drool. Through turn nine comes the Huara R here. 
finding the next straight where 217 miles an hour can be reached if the owner is brave enough. Understandably, with the value of the cars, modesty prevails for the drivers, but it's the machinery that's the main fascination in all of this as we've been looking at absolute jaw dropping and uh, ear shattering cars. Not only does Kerbstone offer the owners of these cars a chance to drive them in Europe, but it's also uh, planning uh, a GT Tour in the uh, UAE at the end of the season. So uh, track time at Dubai and Yas Marina. And uh, a regular haunt for Kerbstone members is at Spa. And uh, a number of teams, not necessarily with hypercars, but proper race cars, full race cars, I should say, uh, take the opportunity to go testing within the Kerbstone event. So the Lamborghini SCV12 once more comes towards turn eight. Picks up the power, rides the curb. Those fortunate enough to buy uh, one of these, those 40 owners, uh, get coaching from Emanuele Piro or Marco Mappelli to uh, understand exactly how to get the most or as much as they can out of that car. So uh, Lamborghini looking after the customer, the full service, not just sell them the car, but also uh, help to teach the owner exactly how to drive it. So Pagani goes for the pits. You get two, oh no, stays out, just lets the Lamborghini go. I was going to say, when you get the two of them together like that, you realise just how big they are because they rather fill the chicane. It's a proper Formula One style scream, isn't it, as the cars come down the pit straight. And again, that gargantuan rear wing on the Lamborghini. brand that has certainly come back into the public consciousness uh, over the last few years, largely thanks to its racing exploits, but uh, more and more road cars being produced, never mind these hypercars. Porsche 935 is still circulating as well, but the Paganis getting themselves together now towards the uh, end of this track period. And the owner there deciding, perhaps wisely, just to back out of it a little bit rather than cause a, a race battle. Um, just to lag back a little bit, give the other Pagani enough track space. The area in the paddock for these cars has been a constant flow of people all weekend. Camera phones at the ready. Gear grabbed midway down that pit straight which is about a kilometre long, where it feels like it. Keep on going, down towards turn one. Start 935, the second 
generation, if you like, the original 935 takes you all the way back to 1976 when Group 5 regulations prevailed for sports car racing. But uh, this nod to the past from Porsche and many of the cars presented in retro liveries as well, not just this sort of Interscope style, but uh, also the Porsche Salzburg colours and Martini colours as well. So the Porsche heads for the pits. So we're coming to the end, I think, of the track time. The Lamborghini staying out, but yeah, the bulk of the cars, I think, now are heading for the pits. This car, I think I'm right in saying, is operated by Lamborghini Squadra Corsa itself. This is the one that went up the hill at Goodwood uh, last year. That's another of the Pagani's through. So Pagani, Automobili, Lamborghini Squadra Corsa here with some of their cars and uh, something like seven of the R models present from Pagani. McLaren and Porsche we've already touched on and other uh, brands are looking at getting involved in this for the future as well. So the uh, growing grid of machinery, credit to those that are working so hard to try and generate the interest within uh, the uh, GT1 Sports Club. Checkered flag is being shown, so the lights around the circuit flash with the checkered flag uh, legend, and that means that the pit lane beckons at the end of this lap. So the Lamborghini in, the Pagani in as well. And uh, a great opportunity to marvel in the sights, but perhaps even more so the sounds of the GT1 Sports Club machinery. And uh, no doubt there'll be more of that to look forward to next year at SRO Race Weekends.